Hello, my name is Peter Lieber from Spark Services Central Europe. Today I'm going to show you how OpenID Connect Provider in combination with Enterprise Architect works. Enterprise Architect since version 14.1 provides a possibility to enter into Enterprise Architect repositories with a security feature authentication feature called OpenID. This con the standard support is OpenID Connect. Um, that means that there is some OAuth uh, authorization too. Um, what it does, it calls a website. This website is um, provided by the OpenID provider. And if their authentication takes place, it works, then uh, you, it, there is a callback with the user credentials. And if you have group uh, credentials, and Enterprise Architect accepts this as authenticated. How does this work? I have prepared here a repository EA secured via cloud service provider and you can uh, configure the users and currently I have only the default user called admin administrator and there we have the new options uh, accept open ID authentication um, I will turn this off that I can jump in with the administrator afterwards too. Um, if I restrict it to OpenID or Windows identification only, then it's no way that I can use the Enterprise Architect credentials anymore. So this could be a little bit dangerous if you lose the connections to the OpenID in the background. So I recommend not to turn off the restriction. Um, but nevertheless, it could be a very important option if you want to have really secure repositories. Additionally, um, you can now configure a thing that's called automatically create or modify Windows or OpenID users. That means that if OpenID authenticates right, then automatically Enterprise Architect will add this user to the uh, user list. The configuration, um, one thing left, um, I will close this here and go to groups because if you have predefined group, and this is a must requirement if you activate the feature that you have a relationship to a default user group um, for uh, new users. So this is very important if you define new users, at least one user group must exist. Jumping back to the user configuration, here we have this configuration open ID and I have prepared already a Keycloak server. Keycloak is the first implementer and setting the standard at the end. Um, it's provided, I think, by Apache, I don't know. Um, and I'm not so deep in this OpenID standard, but I'm using it now. Um, I have defined a realm that's called Sparks SSO. And it's very important that you um, pre predefine this um, here then automatically it adds the standard uh, links, well-known OpenID configuration. You can verify if it's really well configured by just copying it and jumping to any browser and see what happens. And there something should come back. So some JSON as you see. Um, and as, if you get some JSON here, then the good news is it's working, um, so this authentication service is available. Um, what is fixed configured is what Enterprise Architect expects. Enterprise Architect expects an answer on port 888 uh, with the, param with the uh, values OpenID and callback. Uh, this you have to implement in the key, uh, key server configuration as a, a return URI. Additionally configured is the client ID because um, we are providing an, uh, a client ID. I name it client EA. I have defined no secret for that. Uh, so I'm happy with the URL and the client ID. Then uh, the scope, I want the, the only default scope is open ID with a return value of sub. Everything else is individual to the open ID provider. So in the key cloak environment, OpenID provides the user information and uh, meaning first name, last name and email address. And I have defined an additional scope that's called group uh, that I can ba get back the group um, here. And I use here a predefined uh, term for the user identification. This is at the end the same as the login should be. 
This is um, the configuration of OpenID. Then I can jump to test. Um, of course, I have to connect with OpenID. And if I'm not logged on, then I get the Spark Systems Enterprise Architect single sign-on. So this is the nice name of Spark's SSO. And there I have defined a user, EAUser01, and uh, that's me, and the password. And now I can log in, and it jumps back to Enterprise Architect and says, oh, okay, everything worked fine. There is a username, uh, uh, there is my name, and this user is dedicated to two groups, admins, there is no lo local link, but there is another group, EA group 01, and there is a link to a local group. So, and if um, this was just a test, therefore it's not taking the user credentials, but uh, what I can do now, you can close this configuration. Um, what you also should know that the user, it makes sense that the user has no rights um, if you automatically add him, but if you define a group that's called admins, what I have defined for Peter Lieber already, then you can define already the group permissions too. So if I log out from this um, project, I close the project and I reopen it, then I can log in with the user and you have seen a short screen showing that it's already granted because uh, single sign-on means it remembers the sessions and uh, that you are that user, um, EA user 01. And I have no access with that user because he is in the group EA users with no rights. But if I'm logging in again as the admin, then I can see in the user environment that automatically EA user 01 was added. Um, if I close, I want to close the session, I'm in this case I'm the admin so I can close the session by myself. Um, this is key cloak as an example, you see active sessions. I will lock out everything, everybody here so that I have no active sessions. Um, if I try to log in again, so I close the model and I reopen and now we'll take the another user, another user. Um, it's EA user, EA user 02. It's Doris Day. Um, then automatically the other user is logged in and created. Uh, once again, not with sufficient rights, so I will have to go to the admin rights. Oops, you should know the password. And there I can see within users that the second user was also added. And now I can assign different user rights if I want. But this is a great news. How this is configured in background, um, just to give you an impression. Um, so Enterprise Architect configuration was all about users and groups. And in, an, in the Keycloak environment I'm using, it was necessary to define a so-called realm. Re uh, where I have defined the single unique name Sparks SSO with a display name and the HTML display name and I say it's enabled. Um, I do not allow that users are uh, able to, to log in, uh, but for the configuration I accept only that the login with email is also allowed. And I require is SSL if it's an external request. Everything else in this case is not important. The next more important topic is to define the client. And the client is EA, and this is also the URL for the EA. Um, there is the most important for configuration, besides enabled, uh, that it's an OpenID Connect and uh, this callback URI that is used by Enterprise Architect, where the user credential comes back. The default client scopes are profile and email, so the profile user profile, and additionally I defined group um, as a group membership token as a part of the result from the client authentication. The client scope I have also the possibility to evaluate, so I can use um, user one and evaluate what is coming back, um, and there you can see what's in group as an example. Um, and I can see, okay, 
everything what I want to see is in this uh, configuration available. For um, additional scopes, um, these are the scopes that are defined additionally. Uh, the default client scope is all about OpenID. So if you use OpenID, then these scopes are part. And additionally, you can ask for profile, you can ask for email and so on. What I have also defined is a role, the so-called EA user role. It makes sense to have such a configuration um, if you are managing the users and groups here. Then I have defined two groups, admins and EA group 01, and two users, um, can show all users, two users, EA01 and EA02. In 01 has a group membership in two groups, and uh, another user is having a group at, uh, owned it at EA group 01. And the last important topic is to see what the sessions configurations are. If you have to log out everybody, you can define for session at an expiry date of half an hour or whatever you want to define. The powerful thing with Keycloak um, is that there is additionally a possibility to define user federation with any LDAP provider or Kerberos provider. And you also can define other defecation uh, possibilities um, like um, uh, with identity providers, sorry, so you can also define identity providers and so you can also use uh, Google or LinkedIn or Microsoft or PayPal, Stack Overflow, whoever provides an OpenID Connect service itself, um, then Keycloak only acts as a proxy. So last but not least, uh, what was that what we have seen? Uh, single sign-on with Enterprise Architect is a configuration uh, that is done within the user um, user area. Um, Enterprise Architect calls the open IT provider. The IT provider goes to an authentication provider um, and however, uh, or, or use it or has its own self-managed system. Then it provides a callback with the user and group information as you have defined. Thank you for watching and more to come soon.